This is the Swarm and Shoot football show with me, Manny Matsakis, as we kick off season two. We've been fortunate because we've had a, a few good interviews. We bring Lynn Grohl on here, and um, he's able to interview some of our players. And we've got a lot coming up in this upcoming season. And um, this Swarm and Shoot football show is brought to you by Big B Coffee, which I've got right here. And uh, it's right across campus here on North Clinton Street. Get the finest coffee beverages in Defiance, as well as great pastries and breakfast sandwiches to start off your day. And for most of us, we also get a pick-me-up in the afternoon by heading across the street to see Sue and everybody over at Big B Coffee. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, BSN Sports. Rob Held, Jim Garris, and the crew over here, the sales team, are the professionals that you definitely need to get in touch with to get your gear. All the DC gear, if you're a high school program out there listening to this, get in touch with these guys and they will help you out. They do a fantastic job with high schools, colleges, businesses in the, in the area. Um, can get whatever type of apparel they need customized just for their business. So I know uh, Rob does a great job for us. Jim is our rep that I see virtually every week of the year, and it just it's outstanding customer service. Welcome to the Swarm and Shoot Football Show, along with Defiance College Head Coach Manny Matsakis. I am Lynn Grohl. Coach, we get to talk about some real football finally. It's been a, it's been a while. Yes, it has, and uh, it's exciting. We're we're ready to go, and uh, as as you're going to be at this point against such a good opponent as uh, Rose Holman coming up, and uh, as uh, as the as the HCAC preseason poll tells you, they're very good. Yes, they are voted number two to start the year. Um, you guys were eighth, which usually these polls are yeah a repeat of the standings from the previous season and it's kind of what you're seeing here yeah it is what it is and you know that's just everyone's perception so let's move on yeah okay yeah absolutely <laughs> well take me take me through training camp because you started off uh when you started we got nailed by some arctic weather yeah and it's finally warming up a little bit but that's uh, right. was it was it a hurdle for you did it put you behind the eight ball a little bit with the weather that you had to go through oh. No more than anybody else, and we're fortunate we had the Smart Center. So, you know, having um, that facility, and even though the practices were only about an hour long because every sport's using it, uh, w which, you know, I'm grateful that the track team was, was very gracious uh, because they practiced right when we would normally practice around 4 o'clock. So they, they, you know, they were running around the track, and we were working on you know, uh, on putting in as much uh, offense and defense as we could. And uh, for two weeks, we were in there. And then just recently, we, we got back outside after uh, Terry Rains cleared a couple feet of snow off the Can field. always count on T. Rains. Coach. Yeah, yeah he, he did a great job, and we're fortunate that we could do that. But good training camp considering, um, you know, the adversity that everybody was dealing with. Did I see some of your football guys on the podiums at the – HCAC indoor track meet here a couple yeah. of weeks ago, Coach? Yes, you did. We got, uh, I know, first and second place in the 60 meters, and uh, and uh, guys placed all over, you know, the conference. And uh, the team finished third, which uh, I think was uh, fantastic because we were able to let those guys. They basically, at the last minute, we just said, hey, you need some guys to run. And and um, and the track team did, and Nate used them to, to their benefit. And uh that's awesome, and and they got a, our players got a chance to compete because uh, we haven't competed since 2019. So there that you go. Probably means you have a little speed to work with on uh, on this roster, I'm sure. Yeah, and and I think that that's a big thing for us through, with getting through training camp. I think we're fast, but we had to, you know, you had to watch on that surface in the indoor because uh, you know you get shin splints because you you know it's not made for stop start those those types of things that football is. But uh, all in all. We came through very healthy. Good. Any other strengths that you foresee out of this group as, as we kind of get into some game action here? Well, I, I think right now some of the strengths that we have are, are, is going to be um, more experience. I mean, there's no question we're the youngest team in this conference for another year. Hopefully that's his last right. time you, I say that. Would you have 16 freshmen, I think, you started yeah. in that Bluffton game the last time you were on the field. Now you have four or five that will yeah. be in the starting lineup. So that's – There you go. Yeah, so Step so that right gives direction. us a chance. I mean, yeah. it's going to give us a chance. So as we move forward, I think we can really improve um, 
in what we're doing uh, is, is throughout the spring. So we're, I, I think our players are excited about that. Uh, strength is we got a lot more guys back on defense. So I ex expect our defense to be good, um, you know, improving as, as everything goes along. But of course, you know, we open up with two, the, the two top teams in the conference, uh, number two and number one, the first two weeks of the season. So, uh, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. Yeah, you have Hanover in your first home game in a, in a couple of years or a year and a half here next week. We'll talk about that next Thursday on this show. And yeah. Rose this week, obviously, a mm -hmm. veteran-laden team. They have uh, uh, 10, 11, 12 seniors that will be starting on Saturday. Um, yeah. They're an experienced group that – uh, obviously, you have your hands full. We have our hands full, and and the most formidable part, I believe, of their team is the uh, they have five senior offensive linemen and a senior quarterback. So when you have that type of a nucleus coming back, you can see why they were ranked so high in the preseason poll. So they're big, they're powerful. I think they their plan will be to uh, you know basically you know force their will on us and and try to you know, get our small, quick guys out of position because they're so big and powerful. So that's what we're dealing with there. And then they've got a great defense, one of the best defenses in the country, um, uh, you know, top to bottom, just great defense. They, they, they have a great scheme. They don't know what they're doing. And um, just a lot of really smart players that make great adjustments throughout the game. Combined to outscore you 88 to 12 over the last two meetings. The last <laughs> win was was 10 years ago in 2011. Not to yeah. not to yeah. you know pile yeah. on here, coach, but uh, yeah. the, those are kind of the facts. Um, what what concerns do they present to you? Uh, do you feel like on Saturday what you know about them? I, I know you don't have any film from them yeah. this season. I I think the biggest concern that uh, I have about them is, you know, they they have a certain amount of an air of confidence because they've been there before. Mm -hmm. So, so you're playing a veteran team that expects to beat you. And like you just alluded to, I mean, the last two times we played them, it was 88 to 12 total. So, I mean, it's not like we've had any success against them offensively or defensively. Uh, so I, I think that that's an issue there that, that, that I don't think they're, they're so intelligent in the way that they play and that they're prepared that I don't believe that they go into a game ever being overconfident. I think they know what it takes to win, and, and they're going to do their best to, to stay the course within their game plan, which has always been very good. If I, my memory serves me correct, I think you had some self-inflicted wounds yes. in the last time you played them, snaps and, and those mm -hmm. sorts of things. I'm sure you're further along in those departments, but that's, I'm sure, something that you focused on is the self-inflicted things that – yeah, you're just giving points away to the other team. Yes, and and that did happen. Snaps over the punter's head, uh, bobbled snaps by the quarterback, uh, fumbles. I mean, our defense I think gave up maybe uh, I believe like three touchdowns in that game, and the rest of the 56 points they got was us giving them the game. So, um, not that we scored enough on offense to even if we even if they would have scored 21, we wouldn't have gotten them. So we have a long way to go there. Yeah, I, I know you focus on Rose, but you're probably more focused on yourselves right now yes. with the youth you have and the inexperience. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that's your main main focus week in and week out here through these yeah. next couple months. Yeah, and, and that's all that we can control is us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have some strengths. We have some weaknesses like anybody does. It's like you're just trying to, uh, you know, keep eliminating the weaknesses and keep building on what strengths show up on the roster. So I think as we move forward, then, uh, you know, our goal is just to improve a little bit every day and then, you know, see how we show up every every Saturday because we've got great opportunities ahead of us because we play all seven teams in the league. Give me some guys that, that you feel like really have to step up, lead this team. Terry Geiger is a, is a guy yeah. that really comes to mind right off the top of my head of what he did with you yeah. for you a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, Terry is, uh, you know, number one on the offense for us. He, he's the key guy. Uh, he, he, he makes the receiving core um, – better just by being in there he's like a coach on the field so we're excited about him there um and then you know on the offensive line we 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 have a center that used to be our starting right tackle Tavon Carson Payton who has to step up and play great I mean he started all 10 games in 2019 so we expect him um, to to lead the point as a center 
um, for this unit. And then um, then on defense, you know, right now, I mean, you, you look at our defense and you've got Stephen Lucas is, is the – he and the, and the back end, so he's sort of the, uh, you know, the, the – very, he's the Terry Geiger of defense. You know, he's the guy that will get those skill guys going. And then you got Maurice Brewer up front, who's the Tavon Carson Payton of the D line. So I mean, he he's got to get the D line playing, and and he he's a six five two sixty D end that uh, that has a, a lot of talent. When he turns it loose, he's tough to block. So um, I think if the rest of our guys all step up with that. Another guy who's not a senior, Rigo Vila. He, he, I think he's he's a he's a formidable uh, defensive lineman on the interior as well. We talked about this on a previous show, the mm-hmm. tackling aspect, because yeah. that is something that every football coach right now that is playing this spring season is, is probably worried about because you haven't probably had much live tackling with being inside. No, and- we have not, and that that is an issue. And you know, you you can work on eye discipline and pursuit drills and so forth. So it, it's going to be. I think the pursuit drill has because of our speed is going to be maybe the most critical part when a guy makes a tackle or he's in on a tackle. The other ten guys got to be going to the ball in case we we don't quite get it. Because I mean, I know when I talked to my brother at the University of Kentucky, and they played Auburn in their opener. They weren't tackling very good at all because they were afraid to do it, you know, because of the whole uh, COVID testing and so forth. So I think um, it is what it is. We're, 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 we're fast. We have to use our speed. You know, they're big. they got to use their strength. So we'll, we'll see how this thing uh, shapes up on Saturday. We'll quickly touch on, on COVID and, and kind of what you have to deal with. You guys test on Wednesday. Yeah. Get sent to Tennessee, um, yeah. and you get rid of your results Thursday night, Friday morning, so you yeah. kind of know what you're going into yep. for the weekend depth, and, and may, hopefully, knock on wood, you don't have to make any adjustments yeah. throughout this season. Take us through that a little bit. Well, it is, as you said, you know, the, the key is for us is after we find out the results, which is generally Thursday night or Friday morning, then we'll meet as a staff and say, how does this affect special teams? How does it affect offense, defense? And then I have locked in a two-hour practice just in case, um, you know, we, we've got to get guys last-minute reps, uh, although we were getting guys reps all week. So, um I think then they know, hey, I'm starting and I wasn't supposed to start, that kind of deal. So I think um, that's where we sit. We may have to play a whole different team. We don't know that. You know, every week they could reshuffle the deck like they did in, in the HCAC in basketball. And, um, you know, and that was done at the at the Division One level as well in the fall with some, uh, who was it, BYU, Coastal Carolina. Right. It was a last-minute game. So we, we may have that as well. So we're ready. Regardless, we just get to play, and we're excited about the opportunity right now. Yep, 2 o'clock Saturday. You yeah. Can, you can watch the game. Uh, what, what is it, the app that, that it's Box called? Cast. Boxcast. Boxcast. And that's Cast. at the bottom here of the show. Yeah, the we'll link. put it in the show notes. The link will be there. And Boxcast is an app on if you have Apple TV, so you can watch it right on your television, and it'll be Rose Holman's broadcast of that. 140 is their pregame show, and it kicks off at 2 o'clock Eastern. And, um, you know, just, just download the Boxcast app, and you can watch it within the comfort of your own home. And, uh, you know, the weather should be good, mid-50s, uh, sunny, you know, so we, we've got a beautiful day to play. And uh, a nice four-hour bus trip up and back each way, so it's eight hours on the bus, and and uh, you know hope we need to be coming back uh, excited that we improved and we played better, and let's see where we go. Well, if the weather's going to be like that, maybe I'll watch it on my porch. I'll just wheel the TV outside, and that's a great idea. I've, I've been to your house. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> maybe what I do on Saturday afternoon, Coach. Good luck on Saturday. Appreciate you taking the time. We'll see you again next week. Thanks. I want to thank you for joining us on the Swarm and Shoot Football Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes. Give us a rating, comment on the show. If you'd like to get all kinds of updates, go to our website at swarmandshoot.com, where you will be up to date on all of our podcasts with audio and YouTube versions on there as well. Right. See feature articles on our current players and alumni, along with updates of what's going on in the program. Take a minute and subscribe with your email to receive these regular alerts every time we update the website.